let's explore solar cells and see how they work. So solar cells are basically PN junction diodes. They are semiconductor devices, PN junctions, which convert light, light into electricity. Electricity. And it can be any light, but since usually we tend to use uh, sunlight because it's available in abundance, we call them solar cells. And you probably know where these are used. For example, they have a lot of applications. For, for example, you probably use them in calculators. These are the solar cells. You have big solar panels used to generate electricity to power up houses. And you also have solar cells in space probes. In outer space, this is one of the best way to generate electricity. There, so these panels over here, these are all containing solar cells. But how do they work? Well, at the heart of a solar cell is a PN junction. So let's quickly recap. We've seen that PN junction is basically a single semiconducting crystal on which one side it is doped with, uh, what is this? These are uh, acceptor impurities. So they accept electrons and as a result, they leave behind holes, a lot of holes. And on the other side, we have donor impurities, they donate electrons, so they leave, give, give, so they leave electrons, okay? And uh, the region in between uh, is where electrons and holes destroy each other, causing a depletion region. This depletion region acts like a barrier and it doesn't allow further diffusion of and recombination of electrons and holes. And we've spoken about this in great detail in previous videos on PN junctions, so if you need a refresher, feel free to go back and check them out. Okay, but the question now is, what would happen if we were to shine light over here? What happens if we shine light on our solar cell? Well, let's go to our band structure to understand what happens. If you look at the band structure of a semiconductor, and if you look at it near the depletion region, and we'll see why we're talking about in the depletion region, because there are no charge carriers over here, we know that the valency band must be completely full. There are no holes over here and the conduction band must be absolutely empty. No electrons over here. So there are no charge carriers over here at all in the depletion region. But when a light falls over here, and if the light photon has sufficient energy, okay, if it has energy more than the band gap, then some of these electrons can absorb that energy and use that to jump into the conduction band. Now, when this happens outside of the depletion region, uh, when the electron hole pairs are formed outside of the depletion region, immediately the electron will recombine with that hole and will release that energy back. And so that process would be useless. We do not get any electric generation because of that. However, when that happens inside the depletion region, that's when things get interesting. So imagine an electron hole pair is formed inside the depletion region. Let's say this is an electron and this is the hole that is formed due to sunlight, due to the photons, light photons, okay? Now, before they have a chance to recombine, look at this electron. This electron gets attracted by this positive charge and therefore it gets accelerated in this direction. This hole similarly is attracted by this negative charge or you can say it's repelled by this positive charge and gets accelerated this way. So before they have a chance to recombine, they are swept across due to the field in the depletion region. This is the electric field generated in the depletion region. And as a result, when electron hole pairs are formed over here, the holes will get accumulated, they'll get swept and they get accumulated in the p-type. And when the holes get accumulated over here, a lot of positive gets accumulated over here, so the p-type tends, tends to become positively charged. And if you want to really think in terms of electrons, you might say, hey, hey, holes are not real things, right? So what's happening over here? Well, think of it this way. Holes are absence of electrons, so electrons are being removed from this side. And when you remove electrons from a side, you end up with positive charge. Similarly, electrons are getting accelerated over here and they get piled up over here. And as electrons get piled up over here, this side becomes negative. And so this side gets negative charge. And now notice a voltage is generated between these two sides. And this is how in solar cells, we use light to generate voltage. And that's what we call the photovoltaic effect. Let me write that down. This is what we call photovoltaic effect. The name makes sense, right? We're using photons to generate voltage. Photovoltaic effect. And now, what would happen if I were to put metallic contacts over here and then connect a device across it, say a bulb? Well then, 
these electrons, sorry, <laughs> these electrons will all repel each other and immediately start flowing through this circuit, through the bulb, and will recombine with the holes. So the electrons will continuously recombine with the holes. And as that happens, more electron hole pairs are generated and more electrons and holes get accumulated over here. And so notice there'll be a constant, there'll be a continuous and constant current supplied by this. The bulb will glow. And notice this circuit does not have a battery. The PN junction itself acts like a battery and that's why it's called a solar cell. And so just to quickly summarize, what's the working principle? The photons absorbed in the depletion region cause electron hole pairs. And before they have a chance to recombine, they get swept due to the electric field. And as a result, charges get accumulated, causing a voltage, the photovoltaic effect. And when you put a, an external, when you connect an external circuit, that voltage is gonna make the electrons go through the whatever device you have over here to continuously recombine with the holes and causing a current. That's the whole idea behind this. And that's how you power up all these devices. Now, before we conclude, one confusion I always had was how are solar cells different than photodiodes? Something we saw in a previous video. They're also having very similar principles, right? Well, short answer is they're basically the same things. So even there, you're using photons to create electron hole pairs which get swept across by the electric field. The difference is in the application. So over here, we allow the charges to accumulate to generate a voltage because we are using this as a cell. But in a photodiode, if you remember, in a photodiode, we do not allow the charges to get accumulated. And the way we do that is by reverse biasing. We attach an external cell. What happens when you reverse bias? The moment electron hole pairs are formed, electrons are immediately sucked through this battery and then allowed to recombine with the hole almost immediately. And that's why there's absolutely no electron hole um, accumulation over here. So there's no voltage generated over here. Why do we do that? Because over here, the idea is not to uh, generate voltage. We're not using this as a cell. The idea over here is to generate a current that is proportional to the intensity of light. If there are 100 photons falling per second, I immediately want 100 electrons going over here per second. If there are 1,000 photons f falling per second, I immediately want the current to increase to 1,000 electrons per second. You get the idea? I want the current to fluctuate with the light. That's the application. And you can, we, you know, we've talked more about this in the previous video. So the basic difference is we do not allow the charges to accumulate over here by reverse biasing. We allow the charges to accumulate and generate a voltage. And of course, there will be differences in the construction, the material, and even the IV characteristics, something that we'll talk about in the future video.